We're looking down what looks to be an infinite number of candles here at the Boca Raton Art Festival. And as we pull back, we're going to meet the creator of this wonderful illusion. Hi, my name is Howard, and this is my business partner, Harvey. How you doing, guys? Pretty good. We enjoy being down in Florida at this point in the year. Uh, everything we do is in glass, stained glass and mirror, and we judge everything in art by its energy. Let's take a look at one of the most energetic pieces in the booth. This is a cityscape of Jerusalem. We have the Western Wall and the map of Israel, and the glass chip is on Jerusalem. Tell us a little about the technique that goes into producing such a wonderful piece. Thank you. Uh, we score and break the glass, we polish it, and we design something, and then we assemble it in a way that there's a composition, and it varies in texture, color, and reflective power. What would you say your signature piece is? Well, we love the cityscape, and uh, the way the glass is contoured, it picks up light and color from everywhere in the environment and we have all of this special architectural glass and the cobalt blue is very high energy. Now is this any city in particular? Yes, uh, we love Chicago and this is a Chicago cityscape. The website is www.harvardreflections.com We're in the booth of Ann Anderson. She's from Sweden. You'd never guess it from the nature of her work, which appears to be largely based on the dark continent. And right now we're looking at one of her most beautiful creations, this lion. Tell us about it, Anne. Well, these are sisal sculptures made from the fiber of the agave plant. And um, the eyes are hand-painted fire glass. The noses are clay. These are all one of a kind. There's no one alike. They all have their own moods, their own personality. Okay. How about the giraffe? The giraffe is my favorite. I love his eyes. His gorgeous, huge eyes. This is a Bengal tiger cub. And uh, I love the stripes, the contrast. And uh, I like his mood. He's con con Contemplating, he is. Uh, this is my technicolored lion head. He is number eleven, existing in the world today. <laughs> well, what do you use to dye uh, for the dyes? Oh, I use fabric dyes, and uh, sometimes I airbrush the details. And he can. He comes in any color. I like the oranges and reds. It's bright. Yeah, this is my raccoon tot. Okay. He is number three. He's adorable. Oh, thank you. And do you have a website? Yes, I do. It's anandersoncom uh, Hold that up so we can uh, just zoom right in on the... Okay. That's www.anandersoncom.com. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you for stopping by. And we're looking at the very impressive canvas here, done by Susan Lane, the artist. And hi, Susan. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Tell us a little about. Tell us a little about this piece. Well, this particular piece is called Reflections, and I'm just totally intrigued with sailboats. And we live down here in the. I live in the beautiful Florida Keys, where sailing is quite the thing, and so it's just a natural inspiration for me to do. This particular one is a Keys sunset. And sun, the Keys are known for their sunsets. Everybody flocks to Key West, but in Key Largo, where I live, we have gorgeous sunsets as well. And uh, this is uh, a particular favorite of mine, the little sun way up there on the top and islands. And that's the way it looks down there in the Keys. You've got islands off in the distance, and they look very mysterious, and you're wondering what's going on. Now, seem to have a three-dimensional uh, effect going on yeah. here. Again, it's heavily textured. I use different mediums to build up the paint. And you're right, it creates a little bit more of a mystery about what's going on there. It's always looking different in different lights. I call that guy the flirt. I photographed him in the Everglades in full plumage. It was uh, the height of mating season, so he was feeling particularly frisky. 
and uh, turned out great. Call that one Kissing the Moon, Lonely Sail on a almost full moon night. It uh, has a certain magic to it. And once again, we have that very obvious textured oh, effect. Yeah. Yeah, it creates a lot of a, a new dimension to the painting. When light hits it, it always looks a little bit different. I just finished this painting, my hibiscus, and I just love hibiscus. They're only, they bloom and they're there for only a day. They have such a very short lifespan that if you see a hibiscus, don't feel guilty about picking it because it's only going to live for a day. Put it in your hair and enjoy it. That's good to know. Yeah. Susan, have you got a website where... Our viewers can see some more of your wonderful work. I certainly do. You can come visit my website at www.laneartwork.com. And now for a little change of pace, we move from sunny Florida to some forested regime. And we're with the artist <laughs> named Gaston. Hello, Gaston. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Tell our viewers a little bit about this first painting. The painting is up in Petoskey, Michigan, which is uh, up in Michigan, all the way up in the peninsula of Michigan. Uh -huh. So that's why it's the same for me. Are you from there? No, I'm not. I'm from Florida. Oh, okay. Yeah. How about this one? This is up in New Hampshire. Um, we, we travel up there and we have that painting. I, I just took it and I paint this painting. And let's take a look at this storm over here. What's going on here? This is in the storm. I just make it up that one. That's a uh, very composition of color. It's an oil like canvas. And uh, that's all. This is around Chicago, Illinois. That's in uh, it's a little place all over in Michigan Avenue. It's uh, the, like the water tower. This is an idea again of, of a painting. This is also oil painting on canvas, original. Well, thanks very much, Gaston. You have quite a catalog here. Thank you, thank okay. you. All right. And we're talking with Michelle Orovitz, the creator of this somewhat psychedelic, if I dare use the word, surreal. painting. Um, I would call it surreal. Where did you get the inspiration for this? Um, just, you know what, my hand moves and then it comes out and then it tells me a story. I don't really ever plan my paintings. Okay, and then we have an abstract one here? Yeah, I've been experimenting with some abstract, but I usually do more faces and figures and, and feminine um, energy. Now, there's an element of uh, mysticism in your work, right? Yes, and I actually go by the name of Mystical Artist. That's my website. Now, I understand there's a story behind this butterfly. Yes, this butterfly was um, a painting that I used as a background for my affirmations. Um, I would take graphics of, of uh, words and I would put it over the paintings and create affirmation giclés and print them out so that um, people can have it, you know, hanging nicely with, with affirmations. I understand you have a book here that uh, yes. used it as an illustration. Why don't you show us? Okay. There it is. And what's the name of this book? We'll get a little plug in. It's um, it's the vision board, the secret to an extraordinary life. It's based on on the techniques of the secret. Right. And do you have a website that you can uh, let let our viewers see more of your stuff? Yes, it's www.mysticalartist.com. And um, on there, I have connections to my blog and my news and all the information. And my uh, my. I have a movie that's coming out. Not my movie, but... Tell us about it. I have a painting. One of my paintings was actually discovered on eBay. And um, and the set designer is going to use it in the movie The Unborn, which is coming out in January 2009. It's actually out now. So. Can we see... Uh, you have a little uh, show and tell on it? Yes. Let's see that show and tell. This is the actress Megan Good. Mm -hmm. And this is um, the painting... Right. It's called the prayer, but that's um, that's my fun news. Well, congratulations! It looks like you have a uh, auspicious career in front of you. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> We're talking with Diane Romanello, the uh, brilliant creator of these wonderful nature scenes and tell us a little about the one we were just looking at with the window. 
The uh, piece that we were looking at is called Step Into a Dream. It was a commission. The original is an oil, very, very large, three five by four feet. And this is a reproduction. It gives you the feeling that you can step into it, and that's what most of my work does. Okay. This one here? This one is uh, called How About Us, and it kind of leads you to believe that you could step right into the boat and go on and go for a little spin alone. And this piece here is another one of my uh, well-known pieces called Paradise Sunset with the Adirondack chairs looking out at a beautiful sunset. You know, that's called Daydreams and it's another window piece that I've done. And it, I like to give you that feeling that you're somewhere looking out at a magnificent scene. If you have an office and you don't have a window or a room that needs a window. It's called Sailing Sailing and um, the original was very large. It was another large piece, three feet by four feet, which was sold last year and this is a limited edition Jacle. This is not available in open edition. All right. Diane, I want to thank you very much and how about a website? Can you show us? DianeRomanello.com Okay. Say that one more time with the mic. DianeRomanello.com Terrific. Well, best of luck. You have a great style. Thank you very much. Very easy on the eye, I must say. And here we are, <clears throat> and we have a piece that seems to be titled To Dance as One. And let's meet the creator of this uh, very fluid and uh, curved space creation. And this is Bob Wilfong. How are Hi, you, Bob? I'm doing good, thank you. Okay, so tell us a little about this piece. Uh, yeah. What's it made of? Uh, all, all of my work is bronze. Okay. The surfaces are finished with chemicals applied at different temperatures, which creates the variation in color that you see in my work. How much does a piece like this weigh about? This one's about 400 pounds. Wow. It's about the max that I can manage on my own. Yeah, sure. All right, let's take us down the road here and give us a little... Give us a little... Uh, this is... This is one of my newer designs. Okay. It's called Give Them Wings. The idea of the piece is that the parents are the ones who give their children the freedom to fly on their own. So we give them the lessons and that, but then we need to let them go so that they can be free. Okay. And moving down, what do we have here? This is called If Only. The idea of this piece is that each of us have asked the question, if only I would have. This design the hand on the chin, the arm holding the hand, shows that contemplation as we look at our past and what we've done, and if only we would have done something different. This is my new, very newest design. Uh, I'm kind of proud of this because I've been commissioned to do a monumental size. It's 15 feet tall. The title is Rockstar. Okay. The piece is going to go actually into a performing arts center. Okay. And we're just going to like zoom through this and we get a out of all of the works in the background. Now, Bob, have you got a website? I uh, do not have a website. I do have an email address. Right, let's see that, uh, that flyer that you uh, have there. The Hold that up a little higher. I'm a better phone person than I am email, so the best okay. way is with the phone. Okay, you want to read off your number? Seven? Yeah, 702 325 2476. And your email? My email is BJ Wilfong at hotmail.com. Okay, Bob, thanks very much. You do great stuff and uh, best of luck. Thank you. <laughs> We're talking with Jorge Eilpern. How are you, Jorge? I am fine, thank you. Enjoying this beautiful day Tell us about this in Boca day. Raton. Well, this is clouds. You know, it's like a childhood dream. Right. You know, an insightful work. What's the medium? The medium in this, this case is a transfer. The original is in a pencil, pencil and color pencils. And you know, and if you go that way, you can see Miss Picasso. Yeah, I was going to say, it reminds me of the Cubist uh, Right, period. Picasso, right, right. You know, because everybody says that it's related with, with Picasso. Sure. And I say I put Miss Picasso, like you have some feminist and how about this one? We got a nice colorful one. Yeah, this is Mr. Goldberg. Now, who that is, is he? Is that a, somebody in your life? He, I'm going to tell you, yes. Mr. Goldberg is uh, some guy that I met in Paris many years ago that was became a friend. And uh, after that, you know, I remember I did it from my, not from a picture. I did it just from my mind. Now, she's Uncle Sam's wife. Uncle Sam's wife. I didn't right. know that he was married. That's very interesting. Yeah, well, yeah. 
because there is Uncle Sam. Uh -huh. I can see that. <laughs> and let's see, how about your website? Do you have a... Yeah, I have a website and oh, I have a lot of drawings. Read off the, uh, the website. Yes, it's www, like all um, sites, and right. it's tangomanmusic.com. Terrific. And you can see me on YouTube and listen to my performance and everything is around there. So you're also a working musician? I am a working musician. All right, well, we'll just take one last look at your stuff and uh, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And best of luck to you. And we seem to be inside the uh, Miami Zoo or something. We have a lot of uh, uh, animals and they're designed by Calvin Walton. How are you, Cal? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Okay. Uh, first of all, tell us the medium and how you put these things together. What do you do here? Well, I'm known as a uh, recycle artist, okay. and this is made out of recycled materials. The moose, the multicolored moose, inspired by Peter Max. Um, I created from, this is antlers from coconut twigs coming off the trees. The head is it's, uh, made of mixed medium, which is uh, wood, sawdust, paper fiber, and plaster, uh, painted in acrylic. Same with the fish, this mixed media on wood. This is also a recycled product. I've taken uh, uh, products of sawdust, plaster, paper fiber, and I've mixed them together and over wood, sanded it, and made my designs in it. And this is really wood also, mixed media on wood, uh, influenced by my love of fishing. I fished all my life, so haven't caught the big one yet. Is this a self-portrait? You could say that. Okay, why don't we stand you right next to it? Okay. And, uh, let's see what nah, we. Uh, right there. Yeah. Wait a minute. There we go. Definitely there's a resemblance there. <laughs> then we have the New Orleans influence. This is the basement. Uh, they're all wood, painted in acrylic, and I use a resin finish over it. How long does it take to do one of these pieces? Um, possibly two and a half weeks, depending on the, on the planning. Uh, certainly uh, different. I've never seen anything like this. Thank you. Let's get a, like a, a profile. We can see how three-dimensional the piece is. How about a website? See Walton Art. Hold that card up. Okay. Let's, let's go right in on there. <laughs> there you go. Okay. See Walton right, tell Art. Right. www. See Okay. Let's go right in on that. Calvin, thanks very much for your time, and uh, I really liked your stuff. Thank it's you. uh, one of the highlights of my day here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Right on. And here we have a wonderful uh, conception of the late Marilyn Monroe. And uh, let's meet the creator of this very colorful rendition. Hi. <laughs> Tell us your name. I'm Cat Clausen, and I'm a painter. And of course, Cat is short for Kathy. Kathy. Okay. And tell us about the uh, portrait of Marilyn that you All did. right, I'm a fan of Marilyn. Okay. This painting is titled Hope, and I've hidden those words in her hair. I always felt that even though things didn't work out, she absolutely felt that, um, that there was hope. That's great. And above her, another fallen tragic figure. Yeah, I love John Lennon, and I love this picture of him in New York. To me, it looks like a hot, hot New York day. This is my Obama. Who's okay. People have been collecting Obama. It's um, a great deal of interest in him. He's, to me, got a, a, a fantastically beautiful, symmetrical face. I'm sure I'll do many paintings of Obama. This is power within, about the strength within the human soul. Um, I put a face within a torso, and I really love the way the cheekbone and the rib cage make that shape and the, the idea of freedom just being who you are knowing who you are abraham lincoln this is my top selling print right. the museum the abraham lincoln presidential museum in springfield licensed this and right. he is on nine different products in their gift shop so mm -hmm. i am honored that he is within the museum and people enjoy him and of course land of lincoln i'm from dwight illinois this is my george washington and i use the image right off the one dollar bill for george okay and how about something with the guy on a hundred dollar bill any franklins yes, back here. Oh. Hi. oh i got a benjamin franklin 
This is my currency collection. These guys all made money. This is honoring Klimt Embrace Presence and the famous painting by Klimt has this pose. I saw it and thought, oh my God, I got to do my own take on this famous piece. Well, Kathy, thanks very much for giving us the tour. How about a website? Anything our viewers can click on? Okay, and... Let's just, you would just read off, www. w.cat, C-A-T, dash, fine, F-I-N-E, dash, A-R-T, catfineart.com. Terrific. Okay, keep up the great work. Thank you. And we're standing in front of a bonded bronze work of art titled, I Only Feel Free When I Dance. And let's talk to the artist, Richard Hager. How are you, Richard? I'm doing good, doing good. So I specialize in uh, figurative work, okay. uh, female primarily. Okay. This particular piece was one of the first I e executed in Florida. The, the model for this had been in a uh, ballet a long time. Right. And so she basically uh, had worked for several ballet companies and somehow She'd worked for Joffrey and some other ones, but somehow she changed the circus and started doing the uh, doing uh, uh, the aerial work with the ropes. So she developed the upper body part. So she was still in great shape, and so she modeled for me when I was in Sarasota. So that's that's a story behind uh, that particular piece. Okay, Essence is a particular p a favorite of mine because the uh, the viewer. The viewer has to use their own imagination what the meaning of it is. So the, the whole point of it is what is she holding and why is she so interested in it. Can you rotate it all the way around for us? Yes. It's on a turnstile. Terrific. She's got wonderful hair. I, for all of my work I use live models. And so they all start in clay and then they're cast in a various material. How about your website? The website is... You got a card? Yes I do. Let's hold that up for the camera here. I'm sure that there will be some folks out there that want to get in touch with you. Hold that up real high. That's it. It's very simple. My name's Richard Hager. It's www.richardhager.com. And we're standing in front of a large, what appears to be a bar relief of uh, perhaps uh, Venice. Is that what it is? Let's talk to the artist. There's a Ponte Vecchio in Florence. Okay. This is uh, one of the oldest bridge. This is a Syrian, uh, actually, is a um, uh, Darius. Supposing somebody wants to get in touch with you and see some more of your art, you got a website? You can go to my website. Have you got your card out? Okay, hold that up. All right. Okay, hold on. Let's, let's, let's get right in there. Okay, and tell us what it is, www. Possobonelli.com. It's P-O-Z-Z-B-O-N-E-L-L-I. Okay. Dot com. Okay, terrific. Thank you very much. Right. And we have a nice little seascape. And uh, let's get a little information on this painting. We're going to be talking with Marissa Meyer, and she's the very talented artist uh, from this exhibit here. And tell us about the painting, Marissa. This is called Beauty in the Beach, and it's just a Florida landscape with figures in it. Um, this is done in oil, and this is a, um, a horse painting and so I just kind of like the bold colors of the, the horse there. Okay. And I saw one of these on my uh, living room wall the other day. Yeah. What is this? This is a gecko. Uh -oh. A and ruby tell gecko. Tell us about, for people up in New York watching this video on YouTube, what's a gecko? A gecko is a type of lizard, but this is a fun lizard. This is like a lizard you'd want to have. It's a... Do they bite? No, I don't believe so. Do they sell car insurance? The, I think they might. Okay. <laughs> I want to take us outside the shop here, and okay. you have what I think is the signature piece. So okay, wait, wait, let's just step back and take in the whole thing first. Okay. All right, what's the title of this masterpiece? This one is called Go Gators. So I made this before the Gators won the championship. So it was kind of a preview of, I didn't even know that they were going to win, so the, win the championship. So Now we have a big departure in style here. Right. This is more of what I call a cam candy drama or a reflective series. So it, it has elements of candy or confectionery items. And it also has a reflection in the glasses. So I have a series of ref reflective glasses paintings. Is this inspired by Ocean Drive, the tail? Yes. Right. So, and it's kind of a retro type style of painting. And I have 
it, it, you can see in the backlog of my paintings. Um, or okay, if you go to, you over here or if you go to it. my website. Um, right. Oh, there, there that's a great tie-in. I was yeah. just going to ask you. Could, could you hold up your card, but right side up? Okay. <laughs> this is, right. it's operadartweb.com. Let's get a little, a little different angle because of the sunlight. Tilt it up just slightly. Okay. All right, here we go. Or if you Google Marissa Meyer, you can probably find me on the web. All right, and that's M-A-R-I-S-A? Yes. M-E-I-E-R. -E oh, terrific. Marissa, congratulations. You. you have a great style. Thank you. And, uh, you know, keep, keep up, up the keep, work. Keep up the great work. <laughs> here we are, and we're looking at an example of photorealism and it appears to be a uh, train station perhaps in Europe and uh, let's meet the artist David Kennedy standing right next to the painting and tell us about this David. Well this is a, a painting which originated from an old photograph which I, I obtained um, and I think it's Birmingham uh, New Street station uh, around about the 1930s. And of course you're from Great Britain. I'm from, I'm from Birmingham itself yes. Okay. Great Birmingham is a shipping port? No, no, it's, no. In it's in the center, so, yeah. so much for my knowledge. Industrial. Can Industrial. you slide yeah. over to your right yep. and take us down the road here? And most of these pictures you see here are obviously beach scenes and, and they vary between Bournemouth in England again, right. which are the two uh, beach scenes there, and the, the, the boys and the girls uh, images are actually Florida beaches. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm not quite sure where. Just represent your deprived, landlocked childhood. That you <laughs> yes, need to probably because I did. Of, uh, I eventually moved to Bournemouth. Aquatic so, so. Uh, scenes. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> and and, uh, and again, uh, right, how about this this, this, this air mail? Wait, 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 one at a time. We'll do Pan Am <laughs> Airways. Now we don't hear that. Is that Pan American? Pan, Pan American Airways. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Pan American. And again, Airways. it's a, it's a photo I don't know a lot about, but it's it's an interesting photo. It's got right. it's obviously a Cuban going to Cuba. It's a mail a mail plane. Okay. Um, now, it's it's a German plane as well. well t tell tell us the whole concept of photorealism. What, what 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 why is this different from photography and is it? It's, it's, it's based on photography, to tell you the truth. I mean, the whole, whole point of it is that you start from a photographic image. The beauty of phot photography is that it's flat. Right. right. And so you, you, can, you can take whatever, whatever detail you need from that image. These are Florida images again. Yeah. Uh, which I, I'm not sure. I believe that's a, a, the hotel not far from here in Coral Springs, okay. I've been told by um, one of the um, and visitors. And, of course, they don't wear suits like that anymore. This would be, no. what, the flopper era? It's around about the 20s, I think, yes. Okay. Sort of, um, and let's end with this one over here. This is my, my favorite. It's really uh, uh, exciting composition. And what do you call this ride? Uh, this is... Um, <laughs> hang on. <laughs> satin, satin girl. Uh -huh. and satin doll, sorry. Um, right. But it's an image I've been working on for a long, long time. I, I think I was about 19 when I first got hold of this image. So I've been doing various versions of this. Uh, right. But this is the latest one, and it's it's obviously going back to the black and white image of uh, the original. Right. Uh, now, how about your website? If people want to get in touch with you? Yeah, I've got Can you website. hold up your card for us? Stand over here next to the stunning uh, picture right over here. Okay, and what's your website? It's www.davidkennedy.us .us, okay. Well, you do great stuff and uh, I really enjoyed your work. It's like different from anything that I've seen so far today. Well, thank you for your interest. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you.